so I'm here on the water couch with Alexander. Alexander, nice to meet you. Could I come just nice to meet you. have a look at your badge for a second? So, well, tell me who you are and why you're here. Alexander Verbeek, that's um, who I am, working at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in the Netherlands. And what brings me here is uh, especially my involvement in the field of water diplomacy. Uh, the problem we're facing in the world is that there's more and more people and in all the transboundary waters, basically rivers, but it could be also uh, lakes or, or even underground water, there's less and less water. So there's less water, there's more people, there's more demand for water as well because of economic growth, so we consume more water. Um, we as diplomats, but also let's say the NGOs and the water experts in the world, they have to work together to find a uh, solutions for the problem that we have. There's all, we have to look at international law, for instance. There are now two treaties dealing with transboundary waters. Because water doesn't really know geographical, well, it doesn't know national boundaries, does it? It's, uh, yeah. it's The water doesn't it's, know, and unfortunately yeah. we know. <laughs> so I suppose that's the job of diplomats, of yeah. trying, once you have problems between different countries, it could, by the way, also yeah. be within a country, between regions, but how you cooperate on that water. You're right, the water just wants to go downstream. Upstream countries want to use the water as much as they can, since they have less of it as well. So they try to build dams, they use it for irrigation. But the countries downstream, they need clean water and they need enough water. They need it for agriculture, they need it for business, they need it for their own sanitation, drinking water. Um, so it's extremely important for the relations between countries and for the development that they have access to that water as well. So I mean, my experience of, of, of the Netherlands and working with the Dutch has been, I mean, for centuries they, they, they've had to really get to grips with how to share water yeah. because this country water yeah. you know how to how yeah. to allocate it what are what are the kind of diplomatic processes that you can put in place to help countries get to grips with this yeah well it's it's a combination of things there's uh, the main thing i suppose that's the main diplomatic trait that we have is talk to each other get all stakeholders involved which is the government but it's also the NGOs, it's the businesses, it could be the farmers that use the water, to get them around the table and talk about these issues. And we're helped in this case by international law, uh, because there are uh, international treaties dealing with this. Although, I must say, of um, all the main transboundary waters in the world that are, there are 263 that are seen as the main transboundary waters, let's say rivers that flow from one country to another. Um, only about 40% of them is somehow guided by international agreements. It could be bilateral agreements between countries or it could be agreements between a number of countries. Yeah. So what we try to do as diplomats is that you get those people involved around the table and make very good um, deals amongst each other about who has the right to that water. And that's also a technical aspect to it. Yeah. It's often that if you make more clever use of the water, that you can reuse the water, it goes back in the river, and that there is um, enough water downstream to be helped. For instance, on agriculture, if you look at irrigation, if you, in the middle of a hot, dry country, if you just uh, start to spray the water around, most of it vaporizes, it's not used for the agriculture and it can never be used by the downstream countries. Yeah. If you have clever dripping systems, you use less water, you are actually more effective in the agricultural process and the countries downstream have enough water so they can grow their food as well. Yeah, so very briefly, I mean, we're here at the um, high level uh, stakeholder meeting in The Hague and um, what, what do you hope do, do you hope will anything come out of this meeting in particular or you know what would be your hopes for the for the next few days I really? certainly hope so well one thing is of course awareness raising of, of, of this resource water that we often take for granted that water is cheap it's people are saying you, you use it like water like you throw it away but actually it's getting more and more a scarce resource and it's so important for every aspect of life yeah. that's one thing the other thing that we try to get out of this is that after the year 2015 we need new 
Millennium Development Goals. And we believe that access to water is so essential that it, it should get a high priority on this list as a, as a separate issue. We should also set our goals to, so that in the future, um, all the development processes that we're active in in the world um, keep in mind the importance of water. Water yeah. for sanitation, for drinking. And I guess the transboundary issues, because I know and, that the yep. MDGs yep. never really covered any aspects of this. Yep. Yep. Um, so, great. Well, it was good to talk to you. Okay. And I hope, I hope the rest of the event goes well for you. Thanks a lot. Thank you for Thanks. the interview. Thanks.